Apparently, Gilliam is making Lost in La Mancha now. Yeah, I heard that. But I heard that it was on and then might be off again. On in pre-production on IMDb. IMDb is not reliable source of information. It's too it's too user controlled. It's more user controlled than uh, than Wikipedia. Nobody wants to. I mean, I I like Wikipedia, but most people don't want to rely on it. I've heard that though. That he's making the man who killed Mike. When I watched I that, that too. there's a documentary. I'm just gonna talk right to the camera. There's a documentary called Lost in La Mancha that was on Netflix that Steve has always recommended to me mm -hmm. about the making of The Manacled Don Quixote by Terry Gilliam and how it completely fell apart. And I finally got around to watching it, and it was so good because Terry Gilliam is making this movie which would have been probably fantastic, you know. Because they got Johnny Depp, and it was just, at the time, it was like... It just looks so good. He's building these great sets, but then the movie just collapsed on itself. The the uh, the documentary is actually made by the same guys who did the making of for Twelve Monkeys, which is uh, which is an incredible making of. Like it's basically on, another movie within the movie. I kind of blew it. Um, and he, they got on almost unparalleled access just for the making of this, and then as such, they were because of what they created was so great that got even more unparalleled access for the making of The Man Who Killed Don Quixote Which and just happened to go as wrong as things could go. But it was such a good exercise in watching how delicate filmmaking is mm -hmm. and how one little thing, like your lead actor getting sick, can scuttle your entire production because of insurance and ravaging floods in the middle of the Spanish plains. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's, it was just... I was just like, wow, it was like... So entertaining because it totally gives you an insight into the film world that you normally don't see unless you work in film, like all the little nuances of production. Mm -hmm. You don't understand what it takes to make a movie happen. Right. And the fact that you only give them thirty million dollars, like, come on, it's Terry Gilliam. <laughs> you should just walk into studios with this box set and be like, Yeah, but see, the I thing is, make he, a movie. he's a loose cannon. He's he, not a loose cannon. He's a visionary. <laughs> he also fights directly, like, like fights directly in the faces of the studios, right? Like, the, the the Battle of Brazil is all about how he actually tried to snatch it out from under the studio. The studio was trying to release <coughs> it one way, he tried to release it another. So he's actually, he's not, he doesn't play ball. And that's his problem. And that's why. They don't want to deal with him on that, in that kind of sense. He was, he was going to be up for doing uh, the Harry Potter movies, but they couldn't trust him. No, you couldn't. He would have made him weird. I, well, there's some things you can't let Terry Gilliam do. I don't. I don't you think can't that, let him. Do it wasn't that they Potter didn't trust thing. him in the making and the vision that he would come up with for the films. It was that they couldn't trust him as being able one to control him and two, what would go on with the production. I think they feel that he's cursed, and in a way, well, he kind of is. He isn't. He isn't. He would have taken Harry Potter and made it look so weird and unaccessible that only film nerds would really have loved it. And they would have loved the fact that one of these great books was messed with one of these great directors, and he made probably a brilliant film. But the general public would have looked at it and went like, "What? I'm not Why sure. Why is I... it low angle and wide angle lenses all the time?" I think he was at one point attached to doing the Watchmen film. And that would have been kind of interesting. That would have been interesting because that could lead itself to his sort of. Yeah, he but... should do comic book adaptations. I guess he should. He should. I don't. Try I once. think. I think he might consider that beneath him. Uh, no, no, he worked. He was in Monty Python. Like, what could it really be beneath them? Yeah, but see, that was like those guys were all like uber geniuses who decided to do like their own breed of toilet humor or fish <coughs> flapping humor or however you want to call it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's 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 a fine line. I I don't know. I I think that he he's he's always looking to do great art and to come up with like serious undertone messages and stuff, and that's yeah. what like you know he made Tideland and all that stuff. Yeah, right. uh, Tideland was very bizarre, but seemed with his philosophy, except you could tell that he was way off base because he had to do an intro just to sort of explain the film before the film would run. Like, just, just so you know, you know, this is all about how kids are tough and how they're resilient. Like, it sounds like you're already doing a disclaimer for the fact that, yeah, you might have pushed things a little far for having a child actor. You know, you, not every movie you're going to make, like we just said with the Oliver Stone, is going to be genius. Even with the Coen brothers, like you look at this box set and half of it's not genius. Mm. But you look at Terry Gilliam, and I'm going to say at least two-thirds of what he's done is genius filmmaking. Like, so different and visionary and not necessarily accessible, but he does what he wants and he sticks to his vision. And you got to give him credit for that, even though studios hate it. The passion, but he gets great actors to work with him. That's the thing. Yeah, well, because he's a 
he's an actor's director, right? Yeah. So he lets them do their thing. He, like, Which is what actors want to do. They don't want to just be puppets. Yeah. Well, some do. I'm sorry, I guess not the good ones. Well, I mean, hey, I guess if you, if you were to match up what what Brad was able to accomplish with uh, with the Coens and what Brad was able to accomplish with Terry Gilliam, he did a lot better with Terry Gilliam. Yeah, exactly. He was willing to take some risks. One of his best roles, like I said, no doubt.